Good evening, it's 8 o'clock. The top headlines tonight. The government strike against global social media giant Twitter in a global first. Twitter now faces cases for user tweets as in India. Twitter's legal shield as an intermediary is removed by the government. Uttar Pradesh immediately files a case against Twitter for disturbing communal harmony along with users of Twitter. The, in, uh, the IT minister Ravi Shankar Prasad tweets a series of tweets saying that Twitter failed to comply with the new IT guidelines that come into effect in May. 24 hours later, three student activists given bail by the Delhi High Court are still in jail. The Delhi cops tell a court that they have to verify addresses in states like Assam and Jharkhand, have to take the Rajthani to verify this. And meanwhile, they file a case in Supreme Court opposing bail. The Adani Group CFO exclusively on NDTV amid their shares dipping after controversy over media reports. Why did Adani shares rise so rapidly in the last one year? We asked the CFO's reply. We own 65 to 70 percent of the core infrastructure of India. Controversy over the 12-week gap for COVID shield doses amid reports of dissent in a medical panel. The government denies this. Meanwhile, the chairman of the vaccine panel said no plans to cut the 12-week gap. We have solid data to justify this. The government says edible oil prices are coming down. They're now down by 20%. Meanwhile, our special series on how high inflation is hitting Indians hard. One year later, remembering India's Galwan heroes, our special report. Our lead story tonight, this morning, the government's latest strike was against global tech giant Twitter in a global first. Twitter now faces a case for tweets on its platform as its legal shield has been removed by the Indian government for failing to comply with new IT guidelines which came into place in May. Almost simultaneously, the Uttar Pradesh police filed an FIR against Twitter and other users, including many journalists, of disturbing communal harmony. The minister said that we stand for freedom of speech, but Twitter can't use that as a way to actually avoid following the law of the land. Twitter so far has refused to make any comment. For a government which has campaigned extensively on Twitter since 2014, it is now breakpoint with the American social media giant. In an unprecedented move, the government today said Twitter will lose legal immunity for tweets by its users because it didn't comply with the new IT rules which have ordered compliance with stringent government regulation on removing tweets. In what seemed a synchronized move, the Uttar Pradesh police filed an FIR against Twitter, journalist Rana Ayub, Sawa Nakvi, fact-checker Mohammad Zubair and Congress's Shama Mohammad, plus the media organization The Wire, for what they claimed were tweets destroying communal harmony regarding the assault on an old man in Ghaziabad. This case is a global first where a social media firm is being held criminally liable for user content. Twitter faces several charges of the IPC like promoting religious enmity, intent to riot and criminal conspiracy and the punishment for these can range between six months to five years. This comes after a series of actions by the government against Twitter including raids on their India offices while Twitter has said that the IT rules go against the fundamentals of free speech. Other social media firms like Facebook, Google, WhatsApp, Ku, Telegram and LinkedIn had all complied with the government orders. In the last 24 hours, however, they seem to have blinked, assuring the government a chief compliance officer will be appointed to follow government regulation. Union IT Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad ironically went on Twitter to defend the government's move, saying, Twitter is no longer an intermediary. Twitter was given multiple opportunities to comply, but it deliberately chose non-compliance. And the rule of law is the bedrock of Indian society. India's commitment to the constitutional guarantee of freedom of speech was yet again reaffirmed at the G7 summit. NDTV contacted Twitter for a response about the FIR, but it declined to comment. According to experts, Twitter has not lost its intermediary status, but only protection from penal action. The court will determine whether the uh, social media platform such as Twitter was in compliance or not. Hence, it does not fall to government to en masse strip any social media company or platform of firstly its intermediary status, 
Twitter had earlier expressed its concern over the threat to freedom of expression when the new IT rules had come in. But today the IT minister said that one cannot ignore the law of the land while claiming to be the flag bearer of free speech. In New Delhi with Akhle Sharma, Rubina Mongia and camera person Sushil Rati, this is Sukirti Dwedi for NDTV. And in what's interesting timing, today the Prime Minister addressed a global tech summit, Reviva Tech, where he talked about how the world must invest in India because of five pillars, including a culture of openness. I invite the world to invest in India based on the five pillars of talent, market, capital, ecosystem and culture of openness and from the Uttar Pradesh police now to the Delhi police who despite very very strong words by the Delhi High Court virtually trashing their case against three student activists have now gone to the Supreme Court uh, challenging the bail and have also delaying the whole process for them to actually get bail they told a court today that they have to verify their addresses and the sureties for bail saying that we need to go to Assam and Sharkan by Rajdhani to verify their addresses the judge said it doesn't need so much time and there shouldn't be a delay because of verification but the police said no they're given their permanent address in Jharkhand, Assam and Haryana. So we have to physically go to these places and go to the banks to verify all the bail bonds. The activist laws argued that they want to keep us in jail to the Supreme Court. Here's the matter. The judge has said he will give the order today, but no news yet. So 24 hours later, these three young people still in jail. Well, moving now to our big NDTV exclusive, the chief financial officer of the Adani Group on NDTV in a week where Adani stocks have been hit mergerly after reports that there were questions about some of their foreign fund investors. The CFO spoke to NDTV and also answered questions on why it was that Adani stocks had gone up so dramatically in the last one year. The Ken says, quoting an unnamed analyst, and I quote, there is not a single well-known domestic institution with a large stake in many of these stocks. How would you respond to that? Yeah, that's an interesting question. You know, it's, and it's, a, it's, a, it's one of the things that we, we look at it. For, firstly, it's broadly not uh, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a very uh, simple way. There's, there's, the shares are rising in these, these companies. That, that statement itself is false. The second aspect of this is that India itself, Vishnu, does not have a utilities index. We are a utility platform. So the question, more important question is, we ourselves are not utility players. So actually, this is a, such a moot point and is close to our hearts, those who value India and India's growth and India's development. Think of it this way. We at Adani own the core infrastructure of India just around 65 to 70 percent of the core infrastructure what would be the ideal situation indian pension funds owning indian infrastructure or foreign funds owning in our case foreign infra funds and foreign strategic investors hold indian infrastructure our preference as indian homegrown purely domestic infra and real asset platform world's top 10 real asset platform our core focus is the participation of Indian investors in Indian infrastructure, okay. and and that is a it's a it's a blight on overall that core in Indian investor set, pensioners and long term investors are missing on long term assets, right. and foreign investors are looking at the long term right. assets in India and investing in India. So that is the CFO. Watch the full interview at 9 o'clock. But let's just look at the latest COVID data. Well, the case is slightly up, but just hovering on the 60,000 mark at 62,224. Still, it's less than one lakh daily case for the ninth day. Deaths are also down as well, about 2,500. Tests are up and the positivity rate is going down, which is good news. But vaccinations, and that's the big worry, of course, that the vaccinations have also come down in the last 24 hours. So that's a number we need to keep continuously pushing up. But let's just look at the seven-day average, which really is a good number. So you can look here, the seven-day average in all of these, the positivity rate, deaths and new cases is all down, which is all very good news there. 
Well, of course, the big controversy today has been reports that there's dissent in a medical panel which recommended that there should be a 12-week gap between the Covishield doses. However, the health minister has said that this is not true. And today, the head of that panel told NDTV that it actually is based on a study from Velour, which is much more than the UK study, which has reduced the gap, and that there's solid science to back the Covishield gap staying at 12 weeks between doses. Uh, within the committee, we decided that we will look at the real life data coming from UK because yes. UK and India are the largest consumers of AstraZeneca vaccine. We had this public health uh, England report yes. which suggested that with 12 week interval, the vaccine efficacy was varying between 65 to 88 percent. Vellore has done a CMC Vellore has come up with the data which is primarily which was done in the midst of uh, this uh, Delta surge and which showed that if it is one dose, it is 61% vaccine effectiveness. And if it is two doses, it is 65%. So that's a Velour study, which uh, Dr. Arora is citing there. But moving to our special focus on inflation and its impact on Indians around the country. Today, the center said edible oil prices are dipping by up to 20%. So that's good news. They said mustard oil prices are down and other oil prices also coming down as well. But for the average Indian, these high prices of edible oils has meant that many items are now completely out of their reach. In fact, in some households in rural Uttar Pradesh, all they're eating is roti and salt. तेल महंगा है तेल महंगा को वजह से हम लोग अपना देहात में जो डोरी है उसी का तेल बर्बाद करके थोड़ा थोड़ा उसी में काम चला रहे हैं वो भी उतना नहीं हो पा रहा है जो नहीं के हम्म उधर प्याज भी महंगा हो गया दाल भी महंगा हो गया हम लोग अपना इधर में नमक से अपना भात को खा ले रहे हैं रोटी को खा ले रहे हैं Just roti and salt for some meals amid soaring food prices for 40-year-old Gulab Kaur and 38-year-old Rukmini Devi, who live in this remote village in East UP Sonbhadr and earn 6,000 rupees a month from labour and sharecropping. Cutting corners, the only option for the couple. What does it take to run a household in these times of record inflation? I am at the residence of Manorama Singh, who is a widow. She has a 16-year-old son who lives in her village. पहले 8,000 रुपए कमाती हैं अभी भी और पहले भी. पहले आप 2,000-3,000 रुपए बचा लेती थीं. अब क्यों नहीं बचा पा रही हैं? Sir, इसलिए नहीं बचा पा रहे हैं कि तेल का दाम बढ़ गया है, रिफाइंड का दाम बढ़ गया है, चीनी का दाम बढ़ गया है. तो इसलिए सर नहीं बढ़ पा रहा है. सबसे ज़्यादा किस चीज़ का दाम बढ़ा है Manorama जी? सबसे ज़्यादा तेल का दाम बढ़ा पहले 110 तक मिल जाता था एक किलो बता रही हैं जी हाँ। फिर उसके बाद 120 हो गया फिर उसके बाद 140 रुपए कर दिए फिर 150 रुपए कर दिए अब सीधे जाके 200 रुपए कर दिए 200 रुपए जी तो कैसे मैनेज कर रही हैं आप कहाँ कटौती की है आप सुबह नाश्ते में पूड़ी पराठा बनाते थे अब हम रोटी बना रहे हैं तो जैसे उसमें से थोड़ा तेल रिफाइन मेरा बच जाता है तो हम उसको दाल सब्जी में यूज कर लेते हैं जैसे दो टाइम चाय पीते थे अब एक ही टाइम चाय पी रहे हैं In Patna, 48-year-old Tuntun Sahu, who runs a Litti Chokha stall in Bihar's capital and earns 15,000 rupees a month, says reducing the size of his very popular Littis is the only option to beat price rise. Edible oil prices in Patna have gone up by 50 rupees a litre in three months. And the commercial gas cylinder is costlier by 200 rupees a unit in the last two months. Tuntun's stall reopened on June 4 this year after the lockdown. Last year, he increased his prices from 20 rupees a plate to 25 rupees a plate. But with customers just a quarter of pre-pandemic numbers, another hike is not an option. Everyone is hoping prices will come down soon.
विद मनीष कुमार राजेश गुप्ता एंड प्रभात कुमार दिस इज आलोक पांडे एन डी टीवी बट वी एंड टाइट बुलेटिन विद आर स्पेशल फोकस वन ईयर लेटर रिमेम्बरिंग इंडिया गलवान हीरोज द ब्रेव मैन हु डाइड डिफेंडिंग इंडिया अगेंस्ट चाइनीज इंक्लूशन One year ago, not just Surya Pet in Telangana, but the entire country was grieving the loss of its brave son, Colonel Santosh Babu. A year later, a 10-foot high bronze statue was unveiled of the Galwan hero at his hometown. In the presence of Telangana Minister K T Ramarao and the family of Santosh Babu. Santoshi his wife was made deputy collector by the Telangana government that gave financial aid and a house site in gratitude for the supreme sacrifice of Colonel Santosh Babu Colonel Santosh Babu was posthumously awarded Mahavir Chakra It's been a year to the Galwan Valley clash villagers have gathered for the bhog ceremony of 23 year old sepoy Gurtej Singh of Mansa district in Punjab he was conferred with a Veer Chakra A government school in his village has been named after him. In Gurdaspur district another fallen soldier Naib Subedar Satnam Singh to honor the war hero a school renamed after him here too he has made the family proud sarkar sadi bhakt kar rahi hai jo sadi ka aade ho to puri nahi ho sakti bahut maan wali gal hai sade vaaste shehdi prapt hoyi unna nu koi virla hi hunda hai is tarah di shehdi pawan vaaste five brave hearts from bihar were martyred in the clash with china among them patna's havildar sunil kumar His wife is proud her husband was honored with a seva medal but says her request for a statue of her husband and support for educating her son has not yet been fulfilled